Okay, assalamu alaikum. Um, peace be upon you, shalom, <laughs> to all my non Muslim viewers. I'm doing a little vlog video here, and I'm not quite sure whether I should be doing it or not. Okay, hazy up. Um, sorry, my dog's annoying me. Um, stop it. No, go to bed. Um, <laughs> There's someone very close to me who is currently being diagnosed with either bipolar disorder or schizoaffective disorder, schizophrenia. And the doctors are not quite sure which, neither of the nurses, and they're currently in hospital. Um, and very, very unwell. And when this person says to me, I feel suicidal. I know they're not like me. I'm highly emotional. I can be a drama queen. They're laughing as they say it, and I know that's how they feel. Um, and also to see the difference in them, to see just how unwell they are. Now, the reason why I'm making the video is because I found that people give ridiculous advice to people that have been diagnosed with mental health issues or to the families of people who've been diagnosed with mental health issues. I really hope you can hear me. I hope I'm not too far away here um, for the sound. Um, maybe I should move the laptop. I don't know. Um, yeah, people will kind of focus on, well, I did this and that brought me out of a really bad situation. And they mean it really caringly. They really want you to be okay and they care. But what people don't understand is that when you have certain disorders, it's not just a matter of, I was extremely depressed, or I became unwell, or I became anxious. Your chemical imbalance in your brain is completely messed up. You were very, very ill. This person, as I'm speaking to you, um, is barely able to stand up and walk about properly because of the chemical imbalance in their brain. And you can see the difference on their face and it's it's almost like speaking to someone who's completely drugged up but yet they're not drugged up it's what their brain is doing and this is why i wanted i felt a need to make a video about this even though i don't really want to get into the personal stuff of other people um but i'm going to say a few things um you know, I'm Muslim and um, and I know some quite strict Christians as well that I'm friends with. And one of the things they will always do is immediately jump on its chin or its demons or whatever and want to do prayer circles and exorcisms and the rest of it. And I also know some quite spiritual kind of conspiracy theory people because those are the kind of people I get on with. And they will automatically be, no, don't trust these doctors, don't trust the drugs, don't trust that, don't do that, deal with it like this and, you know, give them a lot of love and take them to this and th look into shamanism and things like that, you know. And, and sometimes the most sense you get are, are from the boring people that don't believe in religion and don't believe in anything extra whatever because they accept that sometimes it's an illness it's an actual illness and the person is mentally unwell their brain chemicals are having a fucking party at their expense you know they're they're perceiving things differently they look drugged when they haven't taken anything they do crazy things their whole personality changes they're incredibly vulnerable as you know, they're dizzy when they stand up, they sense things. I, I have told you about people, people touching them, they hear things, they see things. None of this is normal. And for you to be so kind of like quick to say to somebody that, oh yeah, just deal with it like this, because when I had a few troubles and I had a difficult childhood or I had whatever, I dealt with it like this. You are not fucking helping. 
I'm sorry, I know you mean well, and anything else you would have to say, I would respect you, but I have seen mental illness with my own eyes, I have experienced it with my own self. Now for me, people will say, but you're not that bad. The reason I'm not that bad is because I take my medication every single day. Today I've run out, so no doubt I'll be up till God knows whatever, but it's still in my system, so I'm not going to be a complete psycho, just a little bit manic maybe. Um, but at the same time, with me, I've always, I've never fully, fully been immersed in complete psychosis in the sense that there's always been a little part of my brain that sits back and says, is this true? And there's always been a little part of myself I've been able to kind of hold on to. Um, and the same with this person. This is someone who is incredibly mentally strong. If I told you what they were like as a person, if you met them, you would be in no doubt as their mental strength and their determination and their ambition and their creativity and their intelligence and their beauty and their sex appeal and all these things. You would be in no doubt if you meet them when, you're, when they're well. But at the moment they're not well. And thinking positively is, you know, when you, when you become unwell, one of the things the nurses in the hospital will notice is that your blood pressure and your blood, your pulse and your vital signs, all these things are different to when you were well. And they can actually chart your progress to getting better because these things will change. And that's a physical sign of something, you know. Um, <sighs> you know, when someone's mental, when their, their chemistry in their brain has just gone somewhere for a party, telling them to think positively when they are that unwell, that they are seeing things, hearing things, feeling things touch them, when they can't stand up and walk properly, when they can't communicate properly, um, when they're not even their own personality. This is not helpful. This is not helpful for anyone. And I know it might be difficult for you to imagine someone in this situation unless you've seen it, but for those of us who have seen it and for those of us, for those out there who are carers of people who are mentally ill, for those who have been that ill and for those that have seen it, for the nurses, for the doctors, for these people, they're going to get very fucking irritated with you if you stand in the, in the, in the way of their trying to help this person. And, you know, part of that is going to be medication. Why? Why should someone be so judged because they have to take medication for something that people see? You're just seeing it as a character flaw or you're seeing it as a weakness in the person or as something completely psychological. But sometimes our brain just goes off and does things. I, I, I can't... I'm really not explaining this well and I really wanted to explain it well because it's so important but you know for those of you who kind of um just focus on the spiritual or you know the the alternative no no feeding someone fish three times a day or putting them in a meditation three times a day or getting them to repeat positive affirmations whatever the fuck is not going to help when someone is that ill. It's not going to help. And you're actually hurting the family of those people who were ill and you're hurting that person to be so dismissive, to be so judgmental. And I know you're the last person who wants to be thought of judgmental, but that's what you're being. When it's something you have no knowledge of. Have you spent time in a psychiatric ward before? No. You know, so I really wanted to say this today. This is my little vlog. Um, the thing is, the people that kind of need to hear this, they're not going to be the ones watching, are they? It's you lot again. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'm really um, upset this week because, yeah, that's what's going on. And um, when it's happening to me, that's one thing. But when it happens to someone that you love, it's a hundred times more frightening and more painful and more depressing and it's been very hard for me. 
to hold on to my faith this week. So please pray for this person that I deeply love and try to educate yourselves more on these things if you're watching. Thank you. Okay, I can turn you off now. Okay. Um, oh, there we go.